solving Wisconsin's school funding crisis. So um, the, the point of the presentation is to talk about um, the school funding system we have in Wisconsin, what it's done to school districts throughout the state, why it's done that, and then most importantly, what we can do to, to make it right, to fix it, so that every child in the state of Wisconsin receives a quality education, or at least the opportunity for the quality education. It's so important in the state of Wisconsin that those values are actually in the Constitution, um, where it says that the state's job is to provide um, the type of statewide educational system that gives opportunities to all children, and then that it's the legislator's job to, to pass laws, to set up rules, to have a school funding system that provides that educational opportunity to every child in the state, no matter where they live or no matter how much money their family might make. But something is going wrong, um, whether even before we get to the point where we're talking about why we know because of the headlines in newspapers, um, what's the discussions over the back fences, um, what's going on in the communities around the state, including Milwaukee, that, that we're, we're losing that quality and quantity of education that we've talked about over the years and what makes public education so important. And it's not just Milwaukee. I think it, it's really important to understand that every school district in the state, and there are 425 of them, are having these same problems. So when layoff notices are issued in Milwaukee, layoff notices are also being issued in, in, um, in, in school districts throughout the north. There's a recent headline in the, um, in the um, I think, the Appleton paper that said that the Fox River Valley, the 22 school districts in the Fox River Valley were in crisis because of teacher layoffs. So it's really important to understand that it's not just Milwaukee because what that means is that the solution is a statewide solution, not a Milwaukee solution. We can see that, for example, 64% of the school districts in the state have actually laid off teachers. And obviously when you lay off teachers, you're, you're expecting to see increases in class size. But what we can also see here is that the number of courses are being reduced, um, the number of programs for gifted and talented and at-risk students are being reduced. Um, and if we don't solve the problem, I think we're going to come to that conclusion is that, that public education as we know it is not going to exist. School districts will probably not declare bankruptcy and go away, but the quality and quantity of education just isn't going to exist anymore for children. And when that happens, I think what we're going to find is that not only do we lose our schools and lose the quality and quantity of education for our children, but our communities themselves begin to erode and the lifestyle that we value in Wisconsin actually goes away. We expect a lot of our public schools, but I think the point is we haven't come to grips with the cost of that quality and quantity of education and therefore we've underinvested in the system. And the system itself, the system that takes in the revenue and then distributes it, distributes it among public schools to provide those opportunities we talked about, is a system that no longer works. It's, it's, it's a system that is designed to put every school district in the state out of business eventually. Remembering that the only way public schools operate is through tax dollars. So. In, in the last state budget, not only have we had 17 years of a system that doesn't work and has produced program cuts and services, staff layoffs, um, referenda, and tax increases throughout the state, but as a result of the last state budget, it actually got worse. The state legislature um, passed a budget and the governor signed it that actually reduced the aid that's going to public schools. But what we're finding throughout the state is programs and services are being cut while property taxes are increasing. So this is something that's being caused in Madison. It's being caused by the legislature, Democrats and Republicans. It's being caused by the governor. It's not being caused by local school boards. So when, when we're in this position, when we come to this position, we need to start thinking differently. We're at a crossroad. We can keep doing the things we've been doing for 15 years, but we know specifically what's going to happen. What I've told you so far is not conjecture and it's not theory, it's what has happened to public schools throughout the state of Wisconsin. If we keep doing the same thing, these things will continue. More programs and services will be cut. If we're going to make any changes, we need to make them through the legislature and through the governor, which kind of indicates a strategy that we need to take. Job one, we think, is to solve the crisis that was created in the last state budget, where revenue to public schools actually decreased for the first time in, in history. And our proposal to do that is called a penny for kids. The Wisconsin Alliance for Excellent Schools has suggested, um, thinks it's the right idea, has done the research to say that a penny increase in Wisconsin's already very low sales tax 
a sales tax that hasn't been raised in almost 30 years will raise about $850 million a year. And we, we suggest we, we have a plan to disperse that $850 million to public schools, not to solve the problem, but to meet the crisis head on. There are places to start. It's not like other people, other organizations have not provided uh, school funding reform plans, and yet, historically, nobody has has been bold enough, has been courageous enough to take on this very important job. What we need to do is decide what we as a public, as a, as a voting public, as parents, as, as, as citizens can do about it. And I think there are basically four things. We can get information, we can share information, we can join with other people who think like we do, and then we can use this information. All 99 seats in the state assembly 17 seats or half of the state Senate and the governor's office are up for election. So between now and then, you have the obligation to make the contact, but you have many opportunities to, to work with legislators, to work with candidates, whether they're holding forums, whether they're appearing at fairs, uh, community events. You have many opportunities to, to, to get in their face, into their world, and talk about school funding reform.